and welcome back guys to another video uh, in my last video I showed you how to install Play Store and all the other Google apps and services on Android Lollipop and KitKat for the Raspberry Pi 2 today I'm going to show you how to install individual APK files from your desktop onto your Raspberry Pi running Android KitKat or Lollipop now as we have seen in my previous video the play store doesn't provide too many uh, options to download and install the library is very very uh, minimal so to to install apps that we actually want to run on the raspberry pi we need to manually install it from our computers to the raspberry pi and for that we would of course need our raspberry pi to have at least uh, a mouse attached to it and also connected to the ethernet port and a computer connected to the same network now once we get back what we need to do is go into settings and scroll down to uh, developer options and select USB debugging and once that is done we need to go back and uh, to go back we will in lollipop we will need to use the escape button on a keyboard and once we are there we need to select about tablet and select status and of course like in my previous video we need to note down the IP address in this case it's 192.168.1.6 and we can now return to our home screen that's all we need to take from our Raspberry Pi Android installation and next step what we need to do is switch over to our PC now we can have Ubuntu or Windows running I will be of course using Ubuntu it's much easier and let's switch over as you can see now we are in Ubuntu and what we need to do is to have a separate folder which contains all of our downloaded .apk files so we will need to go to that folder so in my case it's named apk so I'll do cd apk and once we are there we need to have adb already installed on our system now if you guys don't have adb installed i have explained in my previous video how to do it you can follow that up i will leave a link in the description and also you can see my video pop up right here now once that is done what we need to do is select uh, type in adb connect and then the ip address of our raspberry pi so 192.168.1.6 and it should start the adb daemon and say it connected to 192.168.1.6 and next what we need to do is simply start installing our apk files so i will start with ida64 first so i'll write apk uh, sorry adb install aida64 the name of the file dot apk now once we press enter it will start to install ida64 on to our raspberry pi installation during this time you can also observe on your raspberry pi that the status led starts to blink now that means that stuff is being written and processed over on the raspberry pi now as you can see it has successfully written ida64 onto our raspberry pi installation now what we need to do is we can uh, get a few more apks to install so let's see what all a apk i have so i have a uh, es file explorer as well so i'll type es file dot apk and it should, in, uh, it should install that
Now let's try to do a couple of EP APKs together and let's see if it works. Okay, so it didn't work. I thought it would. So let's go back and uh, install Geekbench and System Monitor one by one. And if you want to do them together, what you can do is put a semicolon and write the whole command again. So adb install system monitor dot apk so as you can see it first installs geekbench and once it is done installing geekbench it will start installing system monitor now since we already have geekbench installed it says failure and install file files already exist so next we have system monitor which is now successfully installed and now we now what we need to do is get back to our android installation and check what all works and how it is okay guys now we are back to our android installation and as you would have already noticed it is the android lollipop installed on the raspberry pi this time so let's see how our installations have gone so let's open the app door and we can already see i had a 64 installed es file explorer installed and geekbench 3 as well as system monitor installed so they all have uh, they all seem to be installed correctly and successfully let's launch them one by one to see how it goes so we'll go first with ida 64 now remember this is uh, the android lollipop build so the uh, response would be a lot slower so let's see on our system what it shows the app as you can see has so yeah the response is very slow because uh, the android lollipop build is not very well optimized as the uh, android kitkat build so you can see here we have got pretty much everything running well although it doesn't correctly show the full uh, cpu brand and hardware brand uh, the broadcom cpu number and core architecture but it's working and now for our cpu it shows correctly arm cortex a7 running at 900 megahertz now for some reason the cores all seem to be locked down at 600 megahertz i have no idea what is going on there but uh, yeah as i said it's not a very optimized build so that might uh, this might be a problem that the clock speeds are locked down to just 600 megahertz that that must be uh, something that is slowing the build down now uh, let's go to um, thermal so this actually worked in kitkat which i was not expecting at all so let's see yes it does work here and it is showing the uh, the cpu correctly here but again the build is not very well optimized so let's get back to our uh, app drawer and fire up our next app which would be es file explorer now here um, yes we can see our files being uh, correctly labeled and shown uh, and also it gives us a notification that it has found uh, an updated version so let's go and see how it goes let's update it and it actually is updating itself correctly uh, at least now it's downloading itself so yes this app is functioning well although I would like to see how how well it shows our file system so let's wait till the update completes and I'll get back
all right guys now we are back with the updated version of uh, es file explorer now it did take me some trial and error to finally get it updated there were some issues but finally it did happen and let's see how well it shows our files which uh, as i can see it's pretty accurate and it's working file uh, fine we are in the root directory and when we go to our sd card it shows our emulated sd card and onto android data it shows the data of all the installed apps and other stuff so yes this app also works fine okay next uh, we will be checking out geekbench which is a very famous cpu benchmarking uh, application and it seems to be working fine although, although it's it, it is showing our cpu clock speeds at uh, 900 megahertz we are actually running as we saw in the previous app that we are actually running at 600 megahertz so uh, i am presuming our benchmark would be lower than what we got in the kitkat installation so i'll get back to you guys once i have finished running the benchmark Alright guys we are back with the score and it does not look uh, very good. Now on KitKat what I scored was uh, on single score KitKat was able to score 251 marks. Now on Lollipop we are getting just 174 again for the same reason it's running at just 600 megahertz. Now on the multi uh, core score we were able to score 783 on KitKat but on Lollipop we have just 518 so again yes it's a bit slow optimization issues now back to our app drawer and uh, it's time to see our last app which is system monitor now it's one of my favorite apps and it allows you to monitor your Raspberry Pi, uh, your Android installation on any device very precisely and it has many many details that we can look into. Now for example what we are seeing here is that our CPU is actually capped at 600 megahertz. No more matter what we do, we do get a higher uh, CPU usage percentage but we are stuck at 600 megahertz now let's move on to the ram now on the ram we are seeing uh, what an average android usually you can see on an average android installation which is okay and disk io we have networking Now let's move on to temperature and let's see if it gives us anything. Mm -hmm. Alright, so the system monitor does not show a lot of things. Uh, of course it won't show our battery status because we don't have one. And uh, store it does show storage status but that is uh, very dicey what I'm getting here. It should not be this and uh, yeah this is pretty much it so if you want to install your own apk files on your android installation for the raspberry pi this is how you can do it and again this has been sahaj for gdih signing out enjoy